covalent bonds. In this video, you are going to learn about covalent bonds, how they are made, and how they form. But when similar atoms react, like nonmetals combining with other nonmetals, they share electrons. This is covalent bonding. Nonmetals are found on the right hand side and upper part of the periodic table. Some common nonmetals are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and the halides. They have shells of electrons that are normally half or more than half full of electrons. Since they have a strong attraction for a few additional electrons, it is energetically unfavorable for them to lose electrons, so they share electrons by overlapping orbitals. This makes a bonding orbital, or covalent bond, that contains two electrons. As seen in the video, How Atoms Bond, when two hydrogen atoms bond, the shells overlap, and because each atom only has one electron to share, there are two electrons being shared over two shells. These are represented by a dot and a cross. Which noble gas does this correspond with? The answer is helium, which has two electrons in its outer shell. As a result of electron sharing, each hydrogen atom now also has two electrons in its outer shell. In the next example, we are going to consider oxygen. It's in group six. Therefore, how many electrons does each oxygen atom need in its outer shell to fulfill a noble gas structure? Remember, oxygen has eight electrons in total, so we would need to fill the second shell. The answer is that each oxygen atom needs two more electrons before fulfilling a noble gas structure. This is also called the octet rule. In this example, the octet rule is fulfilled because each oxygen atom shares two electrons in the outer shell, forming an O2 molecule. If you count the number of electrons in each shell, you should notice that each shell has eight electrons shared over two shells, shown by the dots for one oxygen atom and crosses for the other, which is the ideal. Whenever you draw a dot and cross diagram, wherever possible, you should ensure that A, the electrons are equally spaced, and B, that they are paired. The fact there are two shared pairs of electrons in the middle, where the shells overlap, means that the oxygen molecule, O2, has two covalent bonds connecting each oxygen atom. This is called a double bond. Each of the nitrogen atoms has five electrons in their outer shells. How many electrons, therefore, do you think each will need to share to fulfill the octet rule? You should see that there are three shared pairs of electrons in the overlap of the shells. This is called a triple bond. You should also notice that this example fulfills the octet rule. Covalent bonds are directional, which means they are in a fixed position, like holding hands. This is different from ionic bonds, which are formed with an electrostatic attraction between charged ions. The overlap between orbitals means that the atoms in covalent bonds are very close. These things make covalent bonds strong. There are two kinds of covalent structure, small molecules like water and giant compounds like diamond. Because the electrons in the bonds are evenly shared, bonds are not polarized. There is little attraction between molecules and forces between molecules are weak. Compounds made from small covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points and are volatile. They also don't conduct electricity. Carbon and silicon tend to form giant covalent compounds. These bond in the same way, but instead of forming small molecules with one or two bonds, they form four, making up huge lattices or chains of many, many linked up atoms, the basis of the organic chemistry of carbon or the chemistry of rocks. One common example is diamond, which is made of carbon. Each carbon atom forms four covalent bonds because it has four electrons in its outer shell to share and has space for four more. If every carbon atom forms four bonds with four other carbon atoms, and each of these forms four bonds with four other carbon atoms, and each of these forms four bonds, we very quickly end up with a very large structure. 
These compounds have very high melting and boiling points because you have to break covalent bonds rather than intermolecular forces to make them free enough to act as liquids or gases. The covalent bonds hold them rigidly in place in the giant lattice.